So you're struggling with how to improvise. You feel that it's very overwhelming. You don't know how people are doing these beautiful solos. And it seems like they were born with a gift and you don't know where to start. If that's you, you're in the right spot because we're going to solve that once and for all. And by the end of this video, those will never be questions ever again. And we're going to break it down into very simple steps. So anyone, no matter where you're at, who you are, where you've come from, what instrument you play, you're going to have a roadmap that you can follow for the rest of your life and build upon to become an expert improviser if you so choose to. Regardless, you're going to have a lot of fun. And that's really what this is all about, communicating with people and having a lot of fun. So I like to break it down like this. We can't improvise unless we have a strong foundation of our sense of rhythm. Rhythm is the most important element to get together because if you start adding a bunch of different notes and you don't have a good feel and a good rhythm, things are going to be very challenging for you going forward and it's never going to come together. In fact, I knew somebody growing up, I did know somebody that knew a lot of notes, knew a lot of scales and anytime it would come to their solo, they could not really get it together and they ended up having to quit because the rhythm was not there. Now, on the other hand, I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't know scales. I didn't know how to read changes or anything. But yet, I could fool people into that I knew what I was doing. And the reason I was able to do that at a younger age is because I had a strong sense of the rhythm. So any note that I played sounded like I knew what I was doing because of the rhythm and the command. That's how powerful it is. Here's another example. There is a very famous recording of a jam session. It's like Live at the Philharmonic or something like that. Norman Grant's produced this. And he had a lot of really amazing musicians improvising. And he had like people like Charlie Parker, who's an absolute legend, all kinds of people like that. Then we get to Lester Young when it was Lester Young's solo. Lester Young on this solo, he's just playing one note. And the audience is going absolutely crazy. They're throwing clothes at him on the stage. They're cheering. It's like they just got possessed. They went absolutely nuts. You can hear them going crazy. And that is the power of rhythm. If you've ever been in a situation where there's no melodic instruments, no harmonic instruments, all there is is percussion in a drum circle or something like that, and it makes the crowd go absolutely nuts, that rhythm, well, we have the power to do the same thing, even if you're playing a melodic instrument, even if you're an instrumentalist and you have the power to play pitches, you can still take that and use it to your advantage. Less is more. You don't need to know a whole bunch of notes. The first step is to get a command of the rhythm because when you do, it feels good. Okay, so how do we practice this? Well, first, you got to have a metronome going on. And second, you got to know how the feel is. How do we know how the feel is? Well, you got to listen to a lot of music. If you're not listening to music, well, you're going to have a hard time being able to perform. See, we're in a benefit right now. We live in a time period where we have all these recordings that we can reference. We don't have to go hear someone perform live like in the olden days. And you can internalize all that. Just like when you learn to speak. Did you just all of a sudden go into some sort of like textbook and try to figure it out? You heard people in your environment speaking. So you have to understand what a good feel is. Think back on when moments were that felt good for you to hear. And then why did that happen? And apply that to your own playing. So the first step is we really want to get the rhythm good. So I like to just do it on one note. So you got the metronome going, we're pretending the metronome's going on, and you're just jamming out on one note. I'm going to do concert F. All right, so that is the first step. If you can't do that, nothing else matters. So you're going to want to record yourself. You're going to want to listen. Was that in the pocket? Be honest with yourself. Do that in front of other people. Are they feeling like that's grooving along? If you see the people around you start tapping their feet, then you know that you're on to something. If not, 
Well, maybe you need to work on the rhythm a little bit. You have no business learning any notes, pitches to play if you can't do that. Wouldn't you agree? Yes or no in your mind, or you can put it into the comment section. All right? Now, after that's cool, let's not go too crazy yet. Let's just add one other note. Okay? So I'm going to use an A because what we're going to essentially do is we're going to use the notes in the chord of F major to start. So it'd be F A C E, the F major seven chord. So let's do the A now. Now, did you notice that I'm using space? Do not be afraid of space. One of the common mistakes that early improvisers make, and even some veterans, is they feel that they always need to be playing. The problem is the audience cannot digest what was just heard. So if you played something cool, that's lingering in the air for the audience to digest as long as you leave that space. Now what you play after it has to be just cooler, if not better for them to dig it. So you might as well take advantage of the space to let what you just played absorb into someone's sense of awareness. Now we're gonna add three notes. I'm gonna add the C. And then I'm going to add the E, which is the seventh. And we're always doing this in time, so you should have a metronome on, right? Now, let's not go too crazy yet. Let's add different ranges of those pitches. So there's different octaves of those pitches. Let's add the full range of our instrument. Okay, so in this case, we got... Okay, so we're going to use all of those at our fingertips. We have those ability to use those now. Okay. You can do a lot with just those notes. We're starting to have some fun now. Things are starting to feel good. And technically, by just using chord tones on any piece of music, you can just use chord tones and improvise beautiful melodic solos. I will give you an example. I'm going to take a blues. I'm only going to use the chord tones. I'm not going to use any scales. I'm just going to use the chord tones. And I want to show you you can have beautiful melodic solos just using chord tones. That's it. I only use the chord tones. Okay? Now, once your rhythm's good, once you're feeling good with a chord, you just start with one chord. Just start with one chord. Don't go crazy. Then you can start doing other arpeggios. Like you started on F major, and now let's do C major. Okay? So now I just chose another one. I'm going to do C major. So I did F major, now I'm going to do C major. I'm going to do the exact same process. Okay? So here's the notes. <laughs> C, E, G, B, C, all right? And then do the different ranges of that one too. So if we'll first start it off the same way. And then you're just doing different octaves of it too. Mm-hmm. 
Okay? Now, after you got your two arpeggios, your two different chords, this is where we start to improvise more how it would be in a real world situation where chords are moving because we're starting to program ourselves to understand how to navigate through the harmony. So at this point, let's just imagine we have two measures of C or of C major and two measures of F major. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the half step relationships of those chord tones. The chord tones are just the arpeggios, one, three, five, seven, and see when the chord changes and the half step relationships of what chord tone can go to another chord tone that's a half step away when it changes. We call these guide tones. We want to find those. And what this does is it allows the listener to hear that you're playing through the harmony and it turns a single line instrument almost into a harmonic instrument because you can hear the harmony. This is what Bach does in his writing. He's doing all these arpeggios and even though it's a single line instrument, you can hear the harmony through it. So from C major to F major, the half step relationships are going to be from the E to the F, the B to the C. What else we got? Those are the half step relationships for these two changes. Okay, so you find those and you hit those at certain times when the chord changes and the audience hears that you're playing through the changes. Watch this. So that's all we're doing. We gotta simplify it. So we're just doing two chords for now, okay? So it's gonna be C major for two uh, measures each and then F major for two measures each. And I'm gonna find the half step relationships and I'm gonna connect them. You always wanna start your idea on a chord tone, you're gonna end your idea on a chord tone. We're gonna find those half step relationships. Check it out. <laughs> So you can hear that I'm going through the, the changes. You can hear that. And it's because of those half-step relationships. And you do this for a lot of different variations of different chords. So you need to know all the different arpeggios. Okay? And then what we can do is we can add scales as icing on the cake. See, a lot of people start with scales. It's very overwhelming. But when you do it like this, it isolates each component. So the really way to master this is you need to isolate every component of improvising. The first component is rhythm, isolate it. Second component is let's just be able to improvise on a couple notes. All right, now we got three notes in the chord. Now we got four notes in the chord, okay? So now we got one chord that we're good. Now we do it in different octaves and ranges okay so that's cool now let's add another chord let's do the same thing there once that's cool let's now go back and forth between those chords all right and you just do that for all the different chords there's not that many there really is like 12 major chords 12 minor chords 12 dominant seven chords that makes up 99 percent of all the music you hear so 12 times three there you go and then you find the half step relationships put yourself on a practice plan and you're like all right this day i'm going to do this chord this day i'm going to do it and you're always going to record yourself because if you're studying photography, would you ever take photos and not develop the film? Well, the same when studying music. You must record yourself and listen back. And what happens? It's the most amazing phenomenon. Your body starts to remember what it likes and starts to remember what it doesn't like. And it throws away what it doesn't like and it internalizes what it likes. And it just does it naturally through osmosis. So what I like to do is I like to practice my recording sessions. And then before I go to bed, I listen to it and I meditate on it. And overnight, I get better every time I do that. Okay? So there's also another misconception about improvising. A lot of people think that improvising is something that just comes out of the thin air. All of a sudden, boom, we got this magical ability. You were blessed to all of a sudden be the improvising wizard. Well, that's not really what happens. What happens is you got to have something in your back pocket. All the greatest improvisers in the world have worked out paths. And over time, they embellish the path. Just when, like when you worked out a language. You memorize certain sentences when you were young. And over time, you embellish it and be able to communicate with your own spin on that. So one of the ways you do this is you listen to other improvisers and you learn what they did on your instrument, note for note, play it back, note for note. And then over time, you learn how to embellish that 
and it's almost like your own way of speaking. So every great improviser, they all have the muscle memory worked out because they've worked out tons of different paths and they can now navigate and just start to fluidly speak. I'm just going to take F major. I'm only going to be in the key of F major and just listen. Now, do you think I could just do that naturally? No. I worked out tons of different paths, felt comfortable on my instrument, and now different paths just come out. And it's the same that will happen to you. I know it seems overwhelming. I know it seems very intimidating, but it's actually quite simple. You just have to be dedicated a little bit each day, step by step, and watch what happens to your playing. I have another video I want you to see. It's right here. This video will help you tremendously. If you like this, you're going to love that video on how to really get comfortable at this. I show different examples with a recording in the background and show you the process, the same kind of thing. You're going to want to click that. If you're new here, I welcome you. My name is Paul the Trombonist, and this is my journey in music. I love music. I love sharing what's in my mind. Maybe it can help you. I don't know. And I just am grateful that you're here. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it helps me out tremendously. That's all I'm asking for is to subscribe, and there'll be more content. Let me know if you have any questions. I read every single comment. I like to hear from you. It's Paul the Trombonist, and I appreciate you. Hopefully that helps you out. Take care. Bye. Thank you.